if you have been using Eevee at all, you know that it can be kind of hard to get something that actually looks good. So I'm going to be showing you how to take your render that looks something like this to something like this. If you want to learn how to do that, sit around for the whole video. Okay, so as you can see, this is what my model looks like right now. And you can see it doesn't look that great. And the reason is, is because I took this over from Cycles and it looked like this. And the reason it doesn't look great is because right now I have light bouncing off the walls like this. So tip number one, add a light probe and iridians volume, whatever it is. Okay. And the reason we added this in is because this basically what it does, I'll show you. So you can go and drag this up and we want to basically have it the same size as whatever we have rendering. So I have this whole house. I'm going to go scale X, so like this, scale Y. Okay, like this. Okay. So now you see I've covered the entire room with this Iridian's volume. The reason we have this in here, because if you go over to indirect lighting in the camera tab, so you go to indirect lighting, and you, what you're gonna do, you're gonna drag up just a few slightly so the bounces, so like four or five. The default is three, but I like it a bit higher. And you go bake in the regular lighting, okay? Now, I recommend doing this in solid mode because if you're in rendered mode, it can sometimes just completely blow out and go white, so you might, your eyes might die. So you go bake it, and as we go rendered, you can see it instantly looks quite a lot better. And what, uh, it basically does is just bake, bounce, uh, bake the bounce lighting. Now as you can see her face doesn't have enough light on it right now and to fix that I'm just going to use this light and drag it uh, pointing to her face and maybe scale it up slightly to make it softer and drag it up the button up slightly. Okay so that looks pretty decent. Maybe we have too much light being cast into the background and the way we fix this by going to the shadows and you can see you have a light threshold. Now, what this does is basically you can change how much the light is affected. So I believe by default 0.1, but you can change this and you can see it pull, kind of pulls back like how much light. So you can kind of get it to be less on the background and more on the face. So like this, it's kind of impossible to do in real life, but basically having like a super bright light in front of you and then the light also goes into the background so you don't really want that as much because you want the the, uh, the foreground to be well lit okay and then so you can just mess around with the light uh, threshold to kind of pull it back a bit and not have the background be in uh, like have light on it now ev is pretty good with this depth of field and uh background blur basically and the way you use this is i prefer doing it with a empty so i just add an empty into whatever i want to have focused so i would select the face select it uh set the cursor to selected and then just add in a empty plane axis like that and then you can see now pokemon is completely out of focus so you select your camera go to your camera settings and then you can see it's step of field and you, you would want to check it obviously and then uh, focus object you can set the focus distance so like this so you can set it manually like that but an easier way is just going here and then just going empty i believe it's you could just rename it so you select it f2 so let's just say focus now select the camera and you can see it's focused. So the change in the f stop basically is how wide open it is, or on a real uh, lens, is basically how wide it is. And that means it gets more light, and then it also has more background blur. And also, focal length does affect this. And focal length is basically how zoomed in it is. You can see the higher your focal length, the more background blur you have. So you just have to like combine them together. And, and the f-stop. So if you have a low f-stop, like 0.1, you can see the background is completely out of focus. And you see if you drag it up, the everything's in focus. And then to actually like change it, uh, like quickly, is you can mess around with the depth of field settings over here. So you can set the, the max threshold. Uh, you can check the, you can just change on the settings just to change it on the fly, which is pretty useful inside of EV. You also have an inclusion, which I usually just add, just adds a little bit of pop to the whole scene. And then something else that can be very useful is screen space reflections. And this basically just makes it look slightly better. Um, like you can see, like some of this edge lighting doesn't look as nice and now it looks slightly better. 
and stuff like that. So it can be pretty useful just to enable it because it doesn't add too much to the render time. I mean, it's EV, you don't really have very long render times. Um, but yeah, if you can peel up my handle, probably enable it. So say you have something like an emission in the background like this. Like you can see, I just added this in for the tutorial, but you can see I have this bright uh, thing. So I have a, just a mission texture on it. And you can see it doesn't really have, it doesn't really look that as glowing that much. Aside from the actual texture, it doesn't look very glowy. And the reason that is, is because we don't have something called Bloom. And what Bloom does is it basically adds a halo of light around your object set, shiny. Okay, and the defaults, like with defaults, you can see some parts just completely blow out. Like you can see we have like this haze over here and haze on the side, which we don't really want. And the way you fix this is by changing the settings slightly. So I usually do is just up the threshold. So you can see it kind of removes the haze over there and haze over here. And then you can also mess around with the, the, the radius if you want. So maybe lower the threshold or yeah, and then up the radius. You could also just have to change the brightness sometimes to get it to actually show up properly um, because you don't want the rest of them to have a huge haze kind of going over it. And you can see, you just make the light look quite a bit nicer and yeah. Hey, thanks for watching the entire video. If you'd like to help out the channel and learn something new, I have a Skillshare course on how to make low poly characters inside of Blender, just like this. If you don't really want to learn how to make low poly stuff and you want to do some more Lego stuff, you can click over here and learn how to make Lego characters. Cheers.